Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how to draw this cat or how I draw this cat using pastels. I'm using pastels on pastel paper. Now, as you can see I've already sketched out the cat. Uh, I'm now going to be doing the background first. So I'm going to be using a mixture of uh, pan pastels and making some uh, other colours up from some soft pastels. So to do this I would use a soft pastel stick and I would use a little bit of sandpaper and that way I can mix my own. I want the background to be slightly out of focus. And what I'm doing here is I'm just using some soft paint brushes just to blend in the background. This is actually a makeup brush. And the reason I'm doing the background first is because when you do the foreground, which is the animal, you want any fur to be over the background. And I'm only really putting the basics of the background down. I want to get on with the picture. So the first thing I always do is the eyes. Here I am putting down a layer of white because obviously the eyes are normally a little bit glassy and it's better to have something down. It makes the eyes smoother. And now I'm just going in to put in the color of the blue. And if you notice how I'm doing it, I'm using a light blue and a dark blue. I've put in the black as well and every time I do this I smooth it over with a blending stump. This allows you to put more pastel into the tooth of the paper. And here I'm just trying to put in the details of the eye. Leaving as much white in the middle as I can. I do go over it occasionally with white. This is where the highlight is picked up of the, the light shining onto the the eye, eye itself. And remember, try and do the basics, uh, some of the details, because you can always go back after to add more details. As usual, I'll put all the materials that I've used in the description below. And now here I'm going to do the same with the nose. I always like to do the eyes and the nose first. They're normally the most prominent features. They're also the bits of an animal, especially a cat or a dog, that most people will see the character of their animal in. Each time you go over anything, obviously blend it in with a blending stump. It smooths it out and allows you to put more pastel into the tooth of the paper. Any prominent features or colours I'm putting in the basics for. This cat has sort of a bluey, bluey tinge to the ears. That will happen when the light shines through them. And here I'm adding white pastel, pan pastel with a soft makeup brush because I don't want too much of it on there. I just want it to be a base layer, which is a slightly lighter layer for the other pastels to go on top of. Here I mixed up a little bit of a light ochre into the pan pastel. And this is just where the shadows come into the fur of the cat. And now I'm working on the ears and the edges. I never worry too much about details when I'm just building the base layers of the animal. And the other thing I'm using here for those of you who've noticed is I'm using uh, what a lot of painters might use is a stick. It's just something that I can rest my hand on and I find that it helps. It just Some people use them, some people don't. I find it helps not to smudge the paper. Some people use this, some people don't. Some people use greaseproof type of paper. I have used that before. But I find this more comfortable. It allows me to get to parts of the, the portrait without touching any of the other parts. 
and rest your hand on it, it's more comfortable. And remember, it's all about layering. So you're just building up layer upon layer. And as you get to the top layers, you're adding more detail. Here I'm adding in some of the hair for the ears. And don't forget to use darkness as your friend. You can put blacks and dark browns in and they will bring your picture to life, giving it depth. And here I'm just layering. And I'm also using the blending stumps as a, almost as a paint tool. Um, obviously after a while blending stumps will get uh, pastel on them. Uh, this is why I use a dark end of the past blending stump for dark areas and the lighter end for light areas. This ensures that the, they don't mix up too much. And it really helps to blend in backgrounds. You can use the blending stump almost as a pencil or a, a, an, applicator, an applicator for pastels. Now as I go in with this uh, animal, obviously this cat has fairly distinctive colours running through it. It's I'm using different pencils, different coloured pencils to add the different colours, building on the hairs and then smoothing them over every time with a blending stump. And there you go where I'm using the blending stump to add in the shadow. I hope you like these videos. I do add a few little tips along the way. I will have a more in-depth video where I go into far more detail um, with the materials and how I use them uh, with my Patreon and also with my YouTube membership. And this part of the drawing is always the more exciting bit because you can actually see the animal come into life. Drawing some of these cats is all about the details and the hairs. I've listed all the colours that I've used here. When you start drawing more animals you see that no animal is sort of one or two colours. There's normally a good six or seven colours, at least in animals in the background. This brings the depth of the picture. If you just did a black and white cat, for example, using blacks and whites, then the, it just wouldn't look quite right. You'd probably find that there's a lot of whites, greys, blues and purples where the light hits the black fur and the grey and the white fur. Remember that you're reflecting light, not the colour. It's the light and the colour in the light that you're reflecting, so nothing is truly a colour. You're just reflecting the colour of the, the light waves. And here for the, where the whiskers go in, it's always a, sometimes a bit tricky because you've got to try and make it look as subtle as possible. So it's always best to try and use it as, as I tend to use a blending tool to smudge in the areas and then I start to darken them slowly. But try not to darken them too much because they are normally quite hidden by, by fur. So you don't want it to be too thick because you won't be able to, to go over them with the fur.
And for those of you that are still watching, uh, if you're enjoying these videos, I do have a Patreon channel. On there, there'll be uh, new videos, full in-depth tutorials from the very beginning, right the way through to the end. Um, far more detailed than on YouTube. Uh, lists of all the materials and where I source them. Uh, along with daily behind-the-scenes updates and more. I will also have a YouTube membership uh, channel which will reflect everything on Patreon, so that's just entirely up to you. Whichever one you prefer to, to join, that would be really great. It would really help me, and I would be able to provide more content. As you can see here, I'm just starting to blend in with more dark colours using a makeup brush. This is the body of the cat and some of the background, the foreground here is a bit like a, a, a thick long carpeted rug. I don't want to emphasise too much on the foreground and the background in this one, this is a commission for somebody. I want the emphasis to be on the cat especially the eyes. But again, it's a case of bringing in the shadows, adding the fur, and sometimes it's more putting the suggestion of fur rather than blocking it in all with individual strands of fur. Sometimes you can't even see the individual strands, it's just a block of white, so just adding a couple of strands in will suggest put the suggestion of fur, which is all you need. The other thing is to remember is when you're doing portraits like this, you're creating a portrait which is not a photograph. You're not trying to create a, a digital copy. If you were going to do that, you'd just take a photograph or scan it. This is, you know, a more personal thing, especially if it's being given as a gift. You're looking to create an image of the character of the animal. And very often you will have more accentuated colours which brings the animal to life on paper and doesn't give as flat a picture sometimes as a photo might. And to finish it off I'm just using a, a soft pastel stick as well as the white pencil to bring in the whiskers and underneath the white of the whiskers I'm also drawing in darker whiskers and just putting a slight line under some of the white of the whiskers just to make them pop. I'm finishing off some of the finer details and the highlights of the eyes. And then for the background, like I said I didn't want the background to be too in focus so it's just a suggestion of a background. Okay, so if you've been following along, you should hopefully have something that looks a little bit like this. It might even look better. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want more, please join my Patreon. It really helps me to produce more of this and pay the bills. Uh, on my Patreon, you will have more in-depth tutorials. You'll have background scenes, background information, and lots of other hints and tips, along with the materials that I use and where I source them. And for those that are at the end, thank you for getting to the end. Thanks for watching.